Item hashtag SCP-1227 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-1227 is to be kept in a concrete chamber 30MX30MX5M, only accessible through a double airlock system. All researchers wishing to investigate SCP-1227 must wear regulation biohazard suits with an enclosed onboard oxygen supply. The chamber contains a 20M wide red circle painted on the floor, henceforth referred to as the safe zone. Before airlock D is opened, SCP-1227 will be instructed to move to the center of the safe zone. Throughout our interactions with SCP-1227, it has been noted that SCP-1227 is relatively docile and will usually submit to these requests, however, its cooperation should not be taken for granted and airlock D will not be opened until it is fully within the safe zone. Due to SCP-1227's passive nature and severely limited mobility, safety outside the safe zone is usually assured. Under no circumstances should any personnel or other biological material enter the safe zone, or engage in physical contact with SCP-1227. Description It is believed that SCP-1227 was formerly Yuri Syriagin, a political prisoner of the USSR arrested in 1957 for pro-democracy leanings. Parts of SCP-1227's extended body have also been positively identified. Scars on the face of SCP-1227-E have been matched to photographs of Alexei, a known associate of SCP-1227. SCP-1227-B is believed to be the trunk and head of SCP-1227-S wife, by his own admission. The remaining parts of SCP-1227-S mass remain unidentified. Documents obtained by the Foundation after the collapse of the Soviet Union have revealed that SCP-1227 is the indirect result of a Russian social experiment conducted by during the winter of 1960. During this study, six political prisoners, including Yuri Syriagin, Alexei, and Yuri's wife, were led into the depths of an unidentified cave by the KGB as an experiment into group dynamics under severe stress. The prisoners were provided with a limited food supply and water but no light sources. After five days of relatively normal social functioning, the group descended into two warring factions, which eventually led to three further days of incoherent screaming, muttering, torture, rape and one forced abortion. On the final day of the experiment, the KGB researchers recorded some disturbing sounds over the concealed microphones, including screaming, pleading, vomiting and redacted. The caving team sent to observe the status of the prisoners discovered a large amount of decomposing human tissue in a liquefied state, with SCP-1227 having formed in the center of it, apparently in good physical and mental health and failing to notice anything amiss with its new situation. The Foundation was notified and SCP-1227 was extracted from the USSR by Mobile Task Force Epsilon. SCP-1227 appears to be a male figure bonded to the heavily disfigured bodies of nine people by a red web-like mass which has been confirmed to be SCP-1227's own muscles and tube-like extrusions confirmed to be heavily developed extrusions of SCP-1227's own respiratory and digestive tracts. Experimentation has demonstrated that physical contact with SCP-1227 will lead to this bonding process being initiated. Firstly, the victim will fall into a coma-like state, whatever part of the body that contacted the creature becoming fused there. Then, SCP-1227 will permanently bond the victim's body to its own by extruding its own blood vessels and nerves into the victim's body. Finally, SCP-1227 will take control of one or more of the victim's vital systems by assimilating that system into its own with its own nerves-slash-blood vessels-slash-intestines. Any part of the victim not associated with this system will lose blood flow and eventually drop off. SCP-1227 will feed any limbs that drop off into the beginning of its extended digestive tract, a hole in the chest of SCP-1227-D. The heart is always kept alive to pump blood around the vastly extended body. 
Although SCP-1227 does not seem to harbor ill will towards human beings to any major extent, it wields no control over this ability, hence the safe zone protocol. Experimental data suggest that this combination of multiple organ systems has greatly increased SCP-1227's biological efficiency, allowing it to survive on extremely limited resources. One observed effect is that SCP-1227's urinary tract is now three times longer than normal and so efficient that SCP-1227-F is now observed to deposit roughly 6-0-G of concentrated urine every three years, which analysis has demonstrated to be 99.9% pure urea. SCP-1227-A and SCP-1227-C have had their respiratory tracts connected into SCP-1227's lungs, meaning that he can process air so effectively that SCP-1227 can survive for a duration of up to six months in a complete vacuum, at the cost of falling into a hibernation-like state. A full breakdown of SCP-1227's bodily systems follows, unless stated otherwise, all victims are USSR political prisoners, SCP-1227-A, unidentified male. Connected to SCP-1227 by January 5th meters of esophagus slash blood vessels. Legs have been removed. Arms still mobile, used to propel SCP-1227-S mass. SCP-1227-B, unidentified female. Connected to SCP-1227's back by extruded muscle. Only trunk and head remain, all other limbs removed. Her womb has data redacted. Pupils will contract in response to high-intensity light sources. SCP-1227-C, unidentified male. Connected to SCP-1227 by 0.8 meters of esophagus slash blood vessels. All limbs have been removed. Mouth will occasionally gape widely, for unknown reasons. SCP-1227-D, KGB researcher. Connected to SCP-1227 by 0.5 meters of intestines. Head and limbs have been removed. Serves as beginning of digestive tract, all food is placed directly into the stomach via hole in the chest. SCP-1227-E. Alexei. Connected to SCP-1227 by extruded muscle. Only the head, trunk, and legs remain, used only to help mobilize SCP-1227. SCP-1227-F, unidentified male. Connected to SCP-1227-G by 2 meters of urinary tract. Only the trunk and right arm remain. Used to process urine and to mobilize SCP-1227. SCP-1227-G, unidentified male KGB researcher. Connected to SCP-1227 by 3 meters of digestive tract. Only trunk and right leg remain. Serves as the end of the digestive system. SCP-1227-H, Foundation Male D-Class Personnel D. Connected to SCP-1227 by as well as extended brain stem. Only the head and heart remain. SCP-1227-I, Foundation Test Canine. Connected to SCP-1227 by 5 meters of extruded nervous system. Only head and front legs remain. SCP-1227 claims it is a precaution for self-defense. It will often crawl to the limit of its connection to bark and whine at researchers. Close observation has revealed that it is outside SCP-1227-S control. I really wish we hadn't tested if the effect also works on animals, but now I expect you to honor safe zone protocol more than ever, until we find a way to amputate the damn thing. 05. Despite the changes SCP-1227 has undergone, SCP-1227 still possesses human intelligence and reasoning. SCP-1227 has been successfully taught English to a sufficiently advanced degree. Psychoanalysis showed no signs of cognitive defects, or disorder of thought patterns and processing. 
SCP-1227 is permitted books and other entertainment at lead researcher Sarah Townsend's discretion, as well as daily visits from friends selected for him by the research staff. SCP-1227 appears to have a normal level of social functioning, and during these visits enjoys hearing stories or news about the outside world. However, it has become apparent that SCP-1227 harbors well-developed delusions into its current state of being, often claiming that SCP-1227-AH are children playing peacefully nearby, as well as repeatedly claiming SCP-1227-DS stomach is an oven. Further interviews have shown that SCP-1227 believes itself to be in a normal family setting, with a wife and several children. SCP-1227 appears to regard containment and constant experimentation as a normal part of family life, never questioning orders or requests in order to preserve its own illusions. Rational emotive therapy has been applied, without success. On one notable occasion, 22-09-SCP-1227 slash complained of feeling hungry. Minutes later he grabbed an unwary D-class personnel and mostly tore him apart, feeding the carcass into SCP-1227-D afterwards he bonded what remained to his biomass, which would later become SCP-1227-H. He appeared to be under the impression that he was preparing a feast for his family the whole time. It is currently unclear if these delusions are symptoms of a disorder such as schizophrenia, or if SCP-1227 is attempting to escape the horror of its current situation by creating a full intrapsychic world where it feels safe, it should be noted that SCP-1227 often claims its childhood was the happiest time of its life, and perhaps this is why its delusions center around themes such as childhood and family. One major breakthrough came when SCP-1227 admitted that the serious puncture wounds to both its eyes were self-inflicted, possibly in an attempt to escape the sight of its own vastly mutated body. All attempts at therapy have failed, the subject appears to be in a well-developed denial system, often becoming aggressive and frustrated when therapists tell him they cannot see his seven playing children, or his devoted wife. All attempts to get SCP-1227 to elaborate on the events inside the cave, or how he acquired these new abilities, are typically met with sudden staring, drawing its body parts around it, and refusing to speak for two to four months. Item